our first example of the integral containing a multivalent function was devoted to a particular kind of a multivalent expression, namely the power type function. So our next example will be dealing with a different type of a multivalent expression, namely the log function. So let's head straight on it. The integral from 0 to plus infinity, log x divided by x squared plus 1 squared dx. It is important to note that you can get rid of the log function altogether by changing it into a x to the alpha expression and then differentiating it with respect to alpha and sending alpha to 0 at the end of the calculation. And obviously, you obtain logarithm of x in the end. So one way to deal with the integral will be to substitute log x with x to the power of alpha and then compute the integral using the technique outlined in the previous example. And then differentiate the answer with respect to alpha and set alpha 0 at the end of the calculation. But in many cases, differentiating the final answer with respect to alpha and especially setting alpha to 0 at the end involves cumbersome computations. So to avoid this, we should master the technique of handling log function as is. Nevertheless, let's proceed along the lines outlined in the previous example. As a start, we have a log function which has a branch point at the origin and branch count going to some direction to infinity. So step 1. We should choose the branch cut in such a way that it coincides with our contour. That means that we choose our branch cut starting at the origin and going right to plus infinity. Like this. But now we have a standard problem. Our contour runs right inside the branch cut. So step two, we should modify the contour. We should move it slightly upwards or downwards with respect to the branch cut. The particular choice doesn't affect the method. So we choose pulling it slightly upward, like this. This, as you probably remember, means the automatic fixation of a regular branch of our multivalent log function. Namely, we equate the original integral with the integral running along the upper bank of the branch cut. But that means that we imply that our log function assumes its arithmetic value on the upper bank of the branch cut. So, the rigorous condition logarithm of x plus i0 assumes real values for positive x. Step 3. The closure of the contour. In the previous example, we dealt with a finite segment integral, and the closure of the contour was turning the contour into a dumbbell-like shape. Here we have a semi-infinite contour, so one of the weight plates of our dumbbell is positioned at infinity. Nevertheless, we will try to proceed along the similar lines. So what we do? We complement our contour with its twin below the branch cut, connect the two at the origin with their infinitesimal circle of small radius epsilon, and connect the two pieces at the infinity with the another, this time, infinite circle. Now, basically, this is our version of a semi-infinite dumbbell. So one weight plate circumvents the origin, and it is infinitesimal, and the other weight plate circumvents the infinity, and naturally, this is an infinite radius circle. So now we need to express our original integral via this new closed contour integral. As before, it consists of four parts. The first part, c plus, is obviously our original integral from 0 to plus infinity. The second part, c minus, is the twin of this contour running along the lower bank of the branch cut. Then the infinitesimal circle c epsilon and the large circular integral cr, where r is the radius of the circle. Let us first discuss the circular integrals. First, the infinitesimal integral around the origin, c epsilon. So let's make a parameterization. z equals the modulus of epsilon times e to i phi. And then plug this into our integrand. So obviously, we can discard z squared in the denominator as a small parameter. So we end up with the integral over d phi times the modulus of epsilon times the log of epsilon. 
And again, this integral behaves as epsilon times log epsilon. And this expression vanishes as epsilon tends to zero. Now, the large circular integral, CR. Well, I leave it up to you to prove that the whole integral behaves as log of r divided by r cubed at large values of r. So the whole thing again tends to zero as r tends to infinity. So as before, our closed contour integral is reduced to a combination of two linear twin type integrals along the upper and lower bank of our branch cut. Let's write down the detailed expression for our low bank integral, c minus. So it's from plus infinity to zero, log of x minus i zero, divided by our denominator. So let's express the low bank integral via our original integral, as we did with the finite segment integral in our first example. In order to do so, we need to relate the values of our log function at the upper and lower bank of our branch cut. So let's draw two points, x0 plus i0 and x0 minus i0, and relate the values of our multivalued function at these two points in the standard manner. So we draw a contour connecting these two dots, a simple circle to the left, and then trace the change of the argument of our log function. So obviously, z rotates by 2 pi in the counterclockwise direction. So the delta argument of z is equal to 2 pi. As a result, the logarithm of x minus i0 equals logarithm of x plus i0 plus 2 pi i. This must be an almost trivial expression for you by now. So let's plug this into our c minus integral. So we have i c minus is equal to, let's interchange the limit of integration and put minus sign in front of our integral. So minus the integral from zero to plus infinity, log of x plus i zero plus two pi i, divided by our denominator. And then we split this integral into two parts. So the first part must be familiar to us. It's our original integral i. And the second term, minus 2 pi i times the integral of dx divided by x squared plus 1 squared, in the so-called remainder term. It's of no interest to us right now. It's some elementary integral, and we'll compute it later. But what we should really pay attention to is our first part, because once we sum up these two linear integrals, we obviously see that our original integral vanishes it just cancel out, we have i minus i. So the whole closed contour integral is now reduced to our remainder part, which is of no interest to us. So our method just failed. Obviously, due to the wrong choice of the contour, the very integral we were after simply dropped out. And this is actually the most striking and amazing feature of complex analysis. It happened that one of the most important and creative problems in complex analysis is the choice of the contour. So probably the vital aim of the method is to help you develop an intuition or counterintuition rather than teaching you every single trick or detail of the technique. So to compute the integral, we either need to modify the contour or modify the integrand itself. As we'll learn later, both paths are doable. In this particular example, I'll show you how to modify the contour to complete the task. So see you on our next slide.